Well, welcome to another edition of Pankers School. I'm Dr. Doug Evans, and it's really wonderful to have you join me today. Uh, today I was going to talk about treatment sequencing, but in order to understand treatment sequencing, and I know that's a medical term, but that basically is why we treat you the way we do. And here at the Medical College of Wisconsin, that typically is with chemotherapy first. But in order to understand that, we have to go over a couple aspects of pancreatic cancer biology. And as usual, I'm going to start with the anatomy. So we'll start here. And remember, the pancreas is put in kind of a tricky location. So here is the stomach. Pancreas is sit sitting in here behind the stomach. We'll give our patient here a gallbladder. The liver is here. Gallbladder is here. The bile duct comes down, merges with the pancreatic duct, and ends in the ampulla. So when you eat digestive enzymes from the pancreas and from the bile and gallbladder are, are squirted out into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum to aid in the digestion of food. Um, we're also, for our, um, for our uh, patient here, we're going to give them uh, a few other elements of the human body. So we're going to put the diaphragm here, and this would be the right lung. This would be the left lung. And then I'm also, we'll, also, um, we'll also put a heart in here. And then we'll put, this is the chest. And then we'll give our patient a couple legs as well. The reason I wanted to do this is I wanted to put in here the lining, the lining of the abdominal cavity. And as is uh, typically the situation, I'll, I'll draw my tumor in black. So we're going to focus, this uh, edition of Pancreas School is going to focus on treatment sequencing for patients whose tumors are localized to the pancreas. So they're, at the time of diagnosis, we don't know that, that they're spread anywhere else. Uh, our CT scan, MRI if it was done, the PET scan show that just all we have is the tumor here in the pancreas. The reason why pancreatic cancer biology is important is because uh, uh, pancreas cancer, like all of the solid tumors, has site-specific areas where it tends to spread. Uh, in the past, this was called the seed and soil uh, hypothesis. In other words, the seed being the cancer cell. And for whatever reason, pancreas cancer has uh, uh, a predilection to go to the liver. We'll just put a couple spots in the liver here. It can also spread through the bloodstream to the lung. And it can spread occasionally to the lining of the abdomen. So for those of you who have cleaned a fish, you know that you open the abdomen. You see the, sli the, the shiny, white, glistening capsule uh, that lines the abdominal cavity of the fish. Called the, in, in, uh, in humans, it's called the parietal peritoneum. And that is an area that's, that's a, that has a very complex biology. Unfortunately, it also has a lot of growth factors and, and other things that cancer cells like. So cancer cells can attach themselves to the peritoneum. So pancreas cancer can spread really in three ways. It can go through the bloodstream, to the liver, and to the lungs. Uh, it can spread uh, directly um, out of the pancreas by shedding tumor cells into the abdominal cavity, and they would grow on the lining of the abdomen. And then occasionally it can spread to lymph nodes, uh, oftentimes in the region uh, around the pancreas. Um, but typically pancreas cancer goes to liver, and lung and the lining of the abdominal cavity uh, and to lymph nodes. And why that's important is because even when the cancer uh, is thought to only be localized to the pancreas, we know there is a very high likelihood that the cancer is spread at a microscopic level to other parts of the body. Obviously, a person who was diagnosed with a tumor just in the pancreas, there would be a couple different ways that that person could be treated. They could either have an operation first, or they could receive chemotherapy first. 
the entire world now is moving to a chemotherapy first approach because we know that cancer is more effectively treated when it's small in size. Uh, it's much more likely that we're going to sterilize and, and completely kill these tiny little uh, uh, cancer cells in the liver, the lung, or on the lining of the abdomen if we get to them right away quickly rather than wait for the patient to have an operation and then, uh, and then have tip what is typically four, five, six weeks of recovery. Typically after surgery, we don't start chemotherapy again uh, for about eight weeks after the operation. Week eight would be the typical time that we would, we would start chemotherapy after the operation. So if we look at the continuum, the continuum of treatment, the patient is diagnosed here uh, and assuming the tumor is localized to the pancreas, first of all, we would love to have uh, any of you watching to be on one of our clinical trials for patients with localized operable pancreas cancer. But even those trials use a general treatment paradigm. So if we say chemotherapy first, and remember the chemotherapy for pancreas cancer is typically given every week or every two weeks through a little Mediport, which is that little device you have under the... Uh, the, under your right collarbone. And after two months, we repeat the CT scan, the labs. Remember that we use tumor markers for pancreas cancer, just like we do for other uh, solid tumors. So you're probably all familiar with uh, the PSA, prostate-specific antigen for prostate cancer. Well, for uh, pancreas cancer, we typically use uh, CA carbohydrate antigen 19.9, we use CEA, and we occasionally use uh, CA125. Uh, we repeat those markers. If the CA19-9 was elevated at diagnosis, which it is in about 75 to 80 percent of patients, we would hope that it would come down. Uh, if we have a situation where the CA19-9 has come down nicely, the CT scan on the CT scan, the primary tumor may look a little bit smaller then we would typically continue the chemotherapy for two more months. If, on the other hand, we felt that the chemotherapy selected actually did not, uh, did not work, that for whatever reason the tumor didn't get smaller, the tumor markers didn't move in the right direction, then we would typically switch the chemotherapy. And this, in fact, is the subject of one of our clinical trials and will be uh, a whole nother topic of, uh, of pancreas school. Uh, the patient then undergoes another CT scan, repeat laboratory studies, and assuming that uh, nothing is worse, we don't see cancer anywhere else, we would then transition to radiation therapy. Now, radiation therapy, unlike the initial treatment with chemotherapy, remains somewhat controversial in some corners of the world. Uh, we feel strongly here at the Medical College of Wisconsin that radiation therapy is, is critically important for patients who have uh, operable, uh, and another term for operable pancreas cancer is curable pancreas cancer. So in someone that we're trying to cure of their disease, we would like to follow chemotherapy by radiation. Um, we then give the patient uh, about a four-week break, uh, so we'll put one month here after the radiation, and then surgery is performed last. So the generalized treatment sequencing for patients with operable localized pancreas cancer, it hasn't spread to other parts of the body, and I'd encourage you to watch the pancreas school episode, episode on, uh, on staging. But for patients who have, uh, who have operable disease that we would classify as resectable, borderline resectable, or locally advanced type A, this would be the general treatment paradigm. Uh, occasionally, if we switch the chemotherapy here for the second two months, we may actually continue that for four months. So there, might, there can be anywhere from four to six months of chemotherapy, then radiation, and then surgery. It is un unusual that in a patient who we plan to operate on that we would continue the neoadjuvant, uh, in other words, giving chemotherapy and radiation before surgery, that we would continue this longer than, than this 
general paradigm that you see on the board right now. Patients with pancreas cancer uh, are usually uh, a little bit older in age. The average age of, uh, of our, uh, our patients who we see here at MCW is in the 68 to 69 range. That's the average. Um, and so we have to be careful. You know, if we have a patient in their 70s, which is very common, I mean, we have, uh, as, you, as you can see from that average, we have almost half of our patients are, are age 70 or over. Um, you have to be careful about how much you put them through if we're going to apply a fairly big operation at the end of this. So for any of you watching this video who happen to be a patient, uh, you have a friend or family member who is a patient, if there is not clarity in what the goals of therapy are and the overall plan for treatment sequencing, then you should try to get that clarity, achieve that clarity uh, with the doctors uh, in charge of your patient. I hope this episode of Pancreas School was, was helpful. Thank you all for watching, and uh, please uh, tune in to other editions of uh, Pancreas School.